Hello friends! As I promised in my previous Rocket Crafter tutorial, today I am going to show you how to build an Auto Crafter for Duration 3 rockets. This design has the same features as the Duration 1 Rocket Crafter. It filters in gunpowder and sugarcane at the top. It requires minimal buffering of unused ingredients, only 3 gunpowder aside from the filters. It crafts at hopper speed, taking in up to 27,000 gunpowder and 9,000 sugarcane per hour to craft 27,000 rockets. That's more gunpowder per hour than any bedrock farm that works in recent versions as far as I know. The Duration 3 crafter also includes overflow protection for the paper crafting so that it won't spill paper if you overload it with sugarcane. Finally, it accommodates the same shulker box loader if you want that feature. With all of these features, it remains small at 6 blocks wide by 8 tall by 6 deep. The key to making any unbuffered auto crafter is to synchronize loading ingredients and powering the crafter. That's easy enough to do by using hoppers to load the crafter and hard powering the crafter itself. It's a little harder to do that with four filtered hopper lines while also making sure each hopper has an ingredient ready so that you don't mess up the recipe and jam the crafter. My solution here is to link the gunpowder filters at the top so that they only move powder to the final hopper when they all have excess items. That ensures even distribution of gunpowder into the three lines, and it means that I only need to check one hopper at the crafter itself to confirm that gunpowder is present in all three. I make sure that all of the gunpowder filters get items by using the sequence of the water stream. I know the first two filters will always fill before the third, so I let the third be the master that unlocks all three when it gets full. We'll begin building the auto crafter by making a frame to use as a guideline. So I'm going to go up by eight blocks, over by six, back by five. And I'm doing the back in glass so that it's visible. I will generally only use solid blocks where they need to be solid to be powered so that you can see through the build as much as possible while I'm working on it. Then inside the glass frame along the back, we can go ahead and put packed ice, the uh, five blocks that I'm showing here. We can't fill in the rest just yet. Um, so, uh, glass in the middle, the water stream will go around this, but we need to get some other components in first. The, there's going to be one stair at the back and then buttons where you see me placing it here. We can put water in the stair, but we can't fill in the rest of the water until we get the supporting blocks underneath. Next, we'll put in the crafters and hoppers. So we're going to go up to the fourth block of our frame, come in from the right by one and have a crafter pointing toward the middle, and then a, another block and a crafter for the uh, rockets. Behind the paper crafter on the right here, I'm going up, I'm going to put a hopper down into it, and then two hoppers pointing back. And I'm going to leave the one solid block there because our comparator will go on there later. Next, we will hopper the output from the paper crafter into the rocket crafter, and we need the rocket crafter actually to point down. I like to have the grid to the front like that, so the uh, rotation doesn't really matter. Then we're going to put hoppers into the other sides, and on the left, this gunpowder line will be just like the uh, sugarcane line on the right. We have a hopper down and then two hoppers pointing back. Directly above, the crafter, we need two pointing down and the top one to the back. And then for the front line, we need a hopper pointing down. An empty container, like I'm going to use a dropper, but you could use a barrel, decorated pot uh, in this position, chest if you want. Then a hopper pointing into the side of that dropper and bring another one back pointing into the front hopper. And finally, the a hopper at the top that's going to catch the gunpowder there also points back. So this is the hopper arrangement for piping our ingredients into the crafter. Now for the wiring, we'll start with comparators at the top on reading the two hoppers that are on the right. That's the sugarcane filter and the third gunpowder filter. Remember, we don't need to read the first two gunpowder lines because they'll all be controlled by the third. For the sugarcane line, we want to use a copper grate in the back, which works just like dust, but uh, will allow comparators to read containers through it. That'll be important later on. Then we bring a line of dust down on two glass blocks like this, target block with a torch on the other side that powers um, 
both hoppers below the filter hopper at the top for bringing in the sugarcane. Then before we put the sugarcane into the filter to set it, let's go ahead and set the slots for the crafter so that we don't end up with a mess in there. And we'll put the sugarcane in 41 of the canes and three preferably renamed items that won't um, stack with anything else. For the gunpowder filter, we're going to run dust in the opposite direction of the sugarcane filter, two glass and a solid block over here. And we'll take a torch off that solid block, but we need uh, to replace this packed ice here with glass so that we don't uh, create a burnout. That torch is going to power dust on top of a solid here, which will lock two hoppers in the first line of gunpowder. Then next to that, a target block, which will allow this dust to also lock the second line of gunpowder. Then from here, we're going to um, bring this line down to lock the third gunpowder line as well. So we'll have a torch to bring the signal down, dust on the glass, and then a torch on the solid block here, which locks the third gunpowder line just like a normal filter. So you can see that that hopper there is locked and um, the top hopper is still able to pull in gunpowder. Now let's put the gunpowder into these and you'll see how the first two lines do not take any um, gunpowder down, like they don't pull it through until I put gunpowder in the third one. You can see now, now they're all pulling. All right, for right now, we need to um, take the gunpowder out of this crafter in the middle. We'll set the slots for doing our rockets. Before we continue with the wiring though, I want to go ahead and get the water into the top now. We need to block off this spot by the comparator because we're actually going to waterlog these two comparators. And that will allow us to have a tighter water flow so we don't have to have this an extra block wide. Um, actually, we need to take out the comparator, put a block there to make the water flow all the way across, then put the comparator back and make sure you waterlog it so that if items do happen to fall down here, they will float back up and resume circling. So see if an item drops, it will go up and cycle around. Coming back to the wiring, we can now uh, hook up the, the redstone to run the paper crafter. And this is going to wrap around the side of our build because I need the space underneath to fit the, the um, redstone for the shulker loader. So I've I'm going to start with a comparator of reading the crafter going into a solid block, which will then um, power redstone dust below it on the glass uh, to bring the signal down here. We're going to use that um, signal strength to cut off a comparator that's reading a signal strength 8 um, container. So I like to use furnace with my stack of 36 plus a solid uh, or an unstackable item. That comparator points into a block with a torch on it, and then two repeaters bring the signal forward to activate the, audit, the uh, crafter block. Now these have to be repeaters so that um, the signal doesn't interfere with the signal coming out of the crafter, uh, either from the block there or from the side of that comparator. So now let's reload our sugar cane and this crafter will start working. And now we're ready to swing around and power the uh, rocket crafter as well as detect when we actually have ingredients ready to go in. So let me remove this paper that has flowed through and we'll start by reading the hopper that's going to have the paper. So we need glass block here, um, solid block behind the hopper. And actually, let me remove that for a sec. I need to get a comparator here that's going to read the hopper through a solid block so that it can bring a signal out where there's space to do something with it. Power that solid block with a torch on the side, so that torch will power the crafter uh, when, when we hook it up. We'll connect it in just a sec, but it'll power the crafter to lock the hoppers when we don't have any paper in stock. Then same for the gunpowder line on the side here, except I'm going to use a copper grate because um, 
I need that to not be solid so that that block itself doesn't get powered by a torch we'll put on shortly. So this solid also, uh, or this comparator also um, points into a solid with a torch on the side, just like the one that's reading the paper. Now underneath, we're going to put a solid block behind and below the crafter with dust on it. That dust is what will power the crafter. Then a solid block above the dust to separate those two lines, the one for the filter above and the one for powering the crafter below. That dust will be part of a clock circuit that wraps around the bottom. So I'm going to put a torch on the side and see that's why we need the copper grate there so that the comparator can read that hopper, but the copper grate doesn't get powered and dust around. A, a um, repeater goes under that one solid block so that we don't get a signal from the solid block messing up our clock. And this will make an eight game tick clock that when it's not running keeps the crafter powered to lock all of the hoppers. Now once you get the wiring done you're going to want to throw in a little bit of sugarcane and gunpowder so that it has the chance to set up its buffering. When it's empty the first rockets that it outputs will be duration two instead of duration three because it doesn't have the hopper or the uh, gunpowder buffered in the hopper lines. But after the first crafting, it won't do that. It'll consistently make duration three rockets. To prevent overflow of the paper hopper, you'll need to bring a signal off the back of the comparator that is reading the paper hopper. So I put dust on glass and I'm going to make a line of three stair stepping up and block there to cut the dust line so that our gunpowder filter and our overflow paper line don't interfere. Then a sticky piston and a container of your choice. I'm going to use my favorite furnace, but you could use a composter, cauldron, chest, whatever you like. Then a comparator is going to read that container through the copper grate and power the um, block in the sugarcane filter to shut it off if there's enough paper in the um, paper hopper to generate signal strength three. So now we've got sugarcane crafting, making paper. When it gets to about 45 or 50 paper in there, it will activate the overflow protection. And again, that's because crafters, if they're pushing into a full container, will just spill items on the ground and we don't want that to ever happen. The final step, if you want to use it, is adding a shulker loader. So our shulker box, of course, is going to go directly below the crafter and we'll push it from the right. So we want a piston on the right below the hopper and we'll load empty boxes from below. So we need a dispenser directly below. We're going to have a dropper pointing into that uh, to feed boxes in. So we're going to turn around and place it this way. And then a hopper into the side of that dropper with a barrel on top uh, to store a supply of empty boxes. The full boxes will come out around the side here next to the input. So we need a barrel there. And then I'm going to step inside make a little hopper line of two and I have to dig my way out. So that's the piping of the boxes and now we can add the wiring. This will be done the same way as in my uh, duration one crafter loader where we're going to base it on signal strength 14 rather than a completely full um, box so that we have we don't spill rockets while the box is breaking. So I'm going to have an, a, two observers like this, one looking at the comparator, one pointing back to the dispenser to, um, to dispense new boxes. And then the comparator that's reading the, the filling box through the piston will point into the side of another comparator that is uh, going to be reading a hopper that's almost full. Now that comparator needs to sit on a target block in order to um, bring the signal back. So in our hopper we'll have four and a half stacks of whatever item you want. Then this comparator is going to power dust on one side which the target block will pull back to a redstone torch 
And then from there we need a repeater and dust on top of that solid block to activate the piston to break our box. The reason we need a target block underneath is because this dust is going to actually be extended over to shut off the, the um, crafting clock when we are breaking a box. So it'll go into a solid block there and a torch off that solid block. So uh, when a box is being broken, um, that first comparator will uh, shut off the second comparator, which will shut off that line, which will turn the redstone torch on, which will power the crafter and everything here um, while shutting off the clock or preventing the clock from running, but keeping those hoppers locked so that we don't uh, craft rockets that would spill on the ground. All right, I've taken the time off camera to load this up with gunpowder and sugarcane and let it run so that we can watch a box breaking. You can see there the box is almost full, almost to the point where it triggers signal strength 14. And there it goes, nice and smooth. And our box uh, comes over to the output while the crafter continues working. So all that's left is decoration. You can fill in most of the blocks in front of the hoppers if you like. Here's one suggestion, take it or leave it. Um, otherwise, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you find this build useful in your world.